all right good student as you can see you are required to find the limit of each of these function so what we have today is finding the limit of a function as it tends to zero the first one is you are required to find the limit of the quotient s raised to power 3 that is 2x over or divided by s raised to power 3 3x as s tends to zero the second one is find the limit of the quotient cos in bracket pi over 2 minus x divided by x as s tends to 0. And finally, the limit of the quotient sine 2x divided by 2x squared plus x as s tends to 0. We are to solve each of them one at a time so that we are able to understand how to solve any quotient sorry any limit given to you so the first one is you are required to solve for the limit of sine s raised to power 3 2x over sine s raised to power 3 3x as s tends to 0 looking at it we know that when uh, when sine when we put s to be equal to 0 we have 0 which means we are not quite sure that if this limit is equal to 0 we don't know whether it is equal to zero so the first thing you have to do is you have to make use of the series we have to simplify this given uh, function remember that this can be written as ln s 10 to 0 sine 2x divided by sine 3x all to the power of 3 to make it easy for us so that when we use the Taylor series for x for sine x using the Taylor series for sine x you have that sine x is equals to x minus s raised to power 3 divided by 3 factorial plus s raised to power 5 divided by 5 factorial minus s raised to power 7 divided by 7 factorial so this will continue so in this case you have to find the this x can be any or can take any value of this this implies that sine 2x is equals to 2x see it can take this is a variable so it it can take any form 2x minus 2x raised to power 3 divided by 3 factorial plus 2x raised to power 5 divided by 5 factorial and so on and so on so the next is you have to do for sine 3x and the sine 3x is the same as 3x minus 3x raised to power 3 over 3 factorial plus 3x raised to power 5 over 5 factorial and so on in this case we can only take the first term of the quotient we take the first term of the quotient the first term of the quotient because the reason is that other terms of the quotient when um, when we substitute 0 when we substitute s 10 to 0 the result will give us equals to 0 so we can ignore other terms and take the first term only i hope you understand it so we take the first term only the first terms of the uh, quotient are taken only the reason is that if we substitute when s tend to zero other terms will also tend to zero so it's of no need now that we have already arrived at this point the next thing you have to do is to take the the first terms so from here this is the first term this is equals to now limit s tend to zero in bracket take the first term 2x divided by 3x to the power of 3 
so we took the we take the first term 2x over 3x to the power of what power of 3 notice that there is s in the denominator and also there is x in the numerator so in this case s cancel out and this gives us lim s 10 to 0 in bracket 2 over 3 raised to power 3 and this will give us 2 raised to power 3 is 8 3 raised to power 3 will give us 27 so that is what you are required to solve you can approximate it using a calculator this gives us 296 to 3 decimal places so therefore len s 10 to 0 sine raised to power 3 2x divided by sine raised to power 3 3x is equals to 8 over 27 is equals to what 8 over 27 or you can write it in the decimal point leave the answer to three significant figure as 0 0.29 29 what 296 so having solved the first one the next thing we have to do is to look at the how we can solve the second question so the second question here is you are given that limit lim cos 2 pi minus x have lim s 10 to 0 cos in bracket pi over 2 minus x divided by x so how can we solve this limit the first one we use series this one how can we solve it so looking at it we know that um, there are other, other method we can use to solve a limit the method of L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's what? Rule. This is easy because we know that if you differentiate the first one, the numerator, and differentiate this uh, denominator, this value will give us one so that we can concentrate on the numerator. So by L'Hopital's rule, for a given function, lim s tending to zero u over v is the same as lim s tending to zero differentiation of the the first um, the numerator and the differentiation of the second the denominator you differentiate separately you don't differentiate the method you use in a, in, in a calculus you differentiate each separately not as a quotient but as a separate entity so from here we know that uh, let's we can now say let let z equals to pi over 2 minus x in in cos pi over 2 minus x so let z is be this in the cos pi over 2 uh, minus x so so that we can assign another value another variable for the uh, numerator so that y assigning variable y equals to cos pi over 2 minus x and this is the same as cos z because we say let z be equals to this so that it will be easy for us to differentiate once we have done that and um, once you have done that you can now it will be easy to differentiate this means the y over the z differentiating with respect to z if you differentiate cos z will give us negative sign z is it not so we know that this value is equal to z is equal to z is it not so differentiate it with respect to z, uh, x the z over the x if you differentiate this value 
with respect to x you will have what differentiating this you have minus one because if you differentiate a constant it will give us zero you differentiate minus s it will give us minus one so you are done with what the numerator part of it therefore the y over the x the y over the x is equals to minus sorry is equals to finding the differentiation to respect to x this is the same as the y over the z times the z over the x so from here we have that the y dz is equals to minus sine z multiplying what dz dx dz dx is equals to minus one i hope you are seeing it and so we have what minus minus will give us plus so we have sine sine z we have what sine z so once we have gotten sine z you can bring it here we know that sine z as z is equals to what we know that z we now have that dy over the x is equals to sine z and we know that z is equals to pi over 2 minus x so this value will be equal to sine in bracket pi over 2 minus x so once we gotten it once we have gotten the answer for the numerator for the uh, uh, numerator then the next is here we say that uh, for uh, L'Hopital's rule, ln, remember, s tend to 0, u over v will be equal to ln, s, s tend to 0, find individual div uh, div uh, derivative. So we have gotten for derivative of the numerator. And then let's find the di uh, derivative of the denominator, this one v is equals to x is it not so the v the x is equals to one once you have gotten all you needed you return to the equation so from the equation here from the expression sorry this is the same as ln by lopitas s ten to zero this value here will be equal to this value sine in bracket pi over 2 minus x is it not divided by we are getting the derivative of this to be 1 divided by 1 so once we arrive at this point what is the next thing to do you can substitute the value as s ten to 0 wherever you see x you substitute 0 wherever you see s you substitute 0 and this is the same as sine in bracket pi over 2 minus 0 divided by 1. And this will give us what? Sine pi over 2. Remember, so any number divided by 1 is the same number. But pi is equal to 180 degree. Equals to 180 degree. This implies that sine pi over 2 is the same as sine 180 degree divided by 2 and this will give us sine 90 so you can use check it in your calculator or four figure table and sine 90 is equals to 1 is it not so once you obtain it you can come to this point you can come here to say that lim s ten to zero cos pi over two minus s divided by x is equals to one. That is the limit of the given function. So we have solved a problem involving series and as well solve a problem involving the relative of individual uh, 
terms numerator and the numerator that make up the quotient of the given expression. So let us look at one more example in this case. Let us look at the third question. So I can clean here. The third question here, in this case, you are required to find the limit of sine 2x divided by the third one here. Have lim s tend to 0. You have sine 2x divided by 2s squared plus x. How do you find the limit of this expression? This is an expression, not an equation, because it has no it has no equation sign. So, so how do you solve this? Can you use a L'Hopital's or can you use a series? Which one can you use in this form? How will you be able to identify whether to use a series, whether to uh, there are many ways you can solve a limit. Whether to use the uh, L'Hopital's rule, series, or partial fraction, or simplification, or factorization. There are many ways you can uh, solve a given uh, problem depending on the nature of the problem. So how can you solve this problem here? Which method can you use? Can you use L'Hopital's? Can you use factorization? Can you use fa uh, partial fraction, series, and so on? So, because if you put s equals to zero here, this equation, this expression becomes zero. Some students will say yes, the answer is zero, as I have already substituted the zero. Not true. You have to simplify this work. So the best way is to use the uh, series. So you can say from Terror series, we have that sign s is the same as s minus s raised to power 3 divided by 3 factorial plus s raised to power 5 divided by 5 factorial minus remember that if you differentiate this you will get the series for cos for example now now d over the x let me show you sine x if you differentiate it you have cos x differentiating these values if you differentiate the first one, have one. If you differentiate here, you have three s raised to the power two. Splitting this, you have three multiplying two factorial. Plus, if you differentiate this, you have five x raised to the power four over four five multiplying four factorial, and so on. Although this is not what we are here, but I will show you that if you differentiate it, you can get cos. So from here, you have one minus can cancel out to give us s squared over 2 factorial if we, this can cancel out to give us s raised to power 4 over 4 factorial and so on so this is for series for cos x very easy once you know what, uh, one you can find the other so because sine is the the beginning of um, trigonometric expressions if you are learning about soccer, uh, soccer tour, sign is the beginning. So with that, once you know the sign, knowing that they are all odd, odd numbers, odd interference, and variable, this is odd. S, the power is 1. You have to interchange the sign. Plus x minus the next is another s raised to power 3. And it uh, denominator is odd, 3 factorial. Plus interchanging sign. Another odd s raised to the power 5, 5 factorial. So once you know for sine, you can get a uh, cos. Knowing cos and the sine, you can use long division to find the value of time x. So let's return to where we are. So from here, we can only make use of the first term. We can only make use of the first term, like I've said before. Take only the first term as other terms will be equal to zero. Take the first term. Other terms will give us equals to zero. So this is only one we can take. So returning to this, we have that ln 
sorry s series to the uh, 10 to uh, infinity uh, this value will be equals to this value will be equals to all right this is for sine x we are looking for sine 2x so sine 2x is equals to 2x this is just a variable whatever you see x is up to 2x minus 2x raised to power 3 divided by 3 factorial plus 2x raised to power 5 divided by 5 factorial so take only this one so sine 2x is the same as 2x divided by you can inter interchange it to be x plus 2x because associative sorry plus is close on the addition whichever one you write is the same a plus b is the same as b plus a so which one you, you write it is the same they are the equal so this is equals to the left hand side is equals to what the right hand side the next thing you have to do here is to use long division although it is easy use long division to simplify the quotient if you use long division <coughs> sorry if you use long division you have x plus 2x squared here is x you have here is 2x so 2s divided by s will give us 2 2 times x will give us 2x 2 times plus 2s squared will give us 4s squared you subtract 2s minus 2s will give us 0 so minus will be here this multiplying plus will give us minus plus will give us a uh, minus 4s squared so this can be written as this value here 2x over x plus 2x squared is the same as 2 which is the uh, quotient minus this minus here 4s remainder divided by the division divided by the div div uh, division s plus 2s squared so that is it once you arrive at this point you have already solved it so from here we can substitute back this value here so and this here this value here is equal to 2 right let me write the len is equals to len s 10 to 0 when i have 2 minus 4 s squared divided by divided by x plus 2 s squared you see it so it's already solved so from here wherever you see s x you put zero you have two minus four in bracket zero squared divided by zero plus two zero squared all of this will cancel to zero so two minus zero will give us two so this value here lem sine two x divided by 2s squared plus x as s tend to 0 is equals to 2 so this is how you can solve this problem involving involving limits we have seen three different methods you can use to solve problems of different types i hope you enjoyed this lesson before you go please do me a favor just kindly subscribe to my channel since it's free you have to pay nothing if you have a gmail account if you haven't please just use two minutes to rate it and subscribe to my channel so that whenever there is new update once you click the notification button you will be the first person to receive the new videos that will help you a lot in mathematics in examinations homework internal and external examinations like and share so others will be aware of these videos i'm giving to you freely i hope you enjoy this video see you in the next lesson Bye for now.